Hi and welcome to the Gemhawks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day today no matter what it is you're doing. Let's talk about bead soup. I've got thousands of individuals and sometimes pairs of beads stuck in jars and boxes all over the place frankly and sometimes I like to challenge myself to just grab a handful of those beads and make something up. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make bead soup earrings. Now the only proviso of the beads I'm using today is that they do have a large enough drill hole to go onto my one millimeter or 18 gauge wire. Let's head down to the board and have a look at our super simple beginner friendly project. Now the beads that I've used for my bead soup earring are around about the same kind of size and shape. These range between 8 and 10 millimetres and they're either round or slightly off round. They have drill holes that are large enough to fit my 1 millimetre or 18 gauge wire through them. However, you can make this a lot smaller if you'd prefer a slightly more diminutive earring. This one measures a good 3.5 inches, so that's quite a large earring, but it does make it easier for me to show you that on the screen. So let's just pop that up into the corner. I promise you this is perfectly acceptable for beginners to wire work to make up together. So let's talk wire. I have an 8 inch length of 1 millimetre or 18 gauge wire. I'm working in a lovely soft raw copper, however this design works entirely perfectly well with a standard medium temper, the kind of wire that you get for crafting or the German style wire. Whichever one you choose, I'm sure it'll be fabulous. So as ever I'm going to give that a lovely warm through just to get that a little bit smoother and fluid to work up. In the long run, of course, this gives your wire a little bit of extra hardness, but whilst you're working it for the first hour or so, it's lovely and fluid and it makes life so much easier. I'm going to give you a sneak peek of the beads I've got lined up. So these are between 8 and 10 millimetres. They're round or off round and they have a large enough drill hole that they will fit on my wire. So I'm going to start around about halfway along my length of wire. And I'm going to put a beautiful right angle bend in there. Now it doesn't have to be particularly tight angled and what we're going to do is just use the warmth of our bodies. I'm incredibly chilly today so my body is not incredibly warm just to create a nice swooshing arc and then I'm going to use my thumb to start that going in the opposite direction. So if I pop that down on the board you can see how that is starting to shape up. Next thing I'm going to do is to grip what would be the continuation. If this straight line passed down through the wire, I'm gripping that where the wire goes on that invisible line. And then I'm going to push the wire back up towards itself. And I'm going to switch the grip of my pliers just so that I can get a little bit of an extra assist getting that whoops a daisy right angle bend to just sorry right hand side bend just to be a little bit firmer if you don't use the pliers to do that you don't tend to get the nice little angle that we've achieved there i'm then going to just stroke that wire to warm it through again and draw that back across now you'll see because i've warmed that wire it makes that arc all by itself if you struggle at any time to create these kinds of shapes you can pop a marker pen or a similar round wooden dowel in just to help you get that kind of shape going on you just need to get that little bit at the bottom set up nicely so what i'm going to do now is just hold the wire on the right hand side for myself you could invert this if you're south pole and the tail is crossing over to the left hand side. If I flip that up for you, you'll see I'm gripping the wire really firmly just as it crosses that first angle we made. And that's so that I can push the shorter tail of the wire all the way around into a little hook or loop form. You can even squish that with your hand if you're quite strong. And that's where we're looking to start that whole maneuver. What I'm going to do now is grip across both of the shoulders of that little petal or teardrop shape down at the bottom. It's an inverted teardrop. I'm going to draw the wire across once more. Now you can see that there's a little bit of bagginess in that loop. Can you see? Just down there, there's a little bit of airspace. So you can take a second just to tighten that up or you can leave it a little bit smooth and open, it's up to you. I'm just going to pinch that very, very gently just to get it to sit where I want it to. And if I turn this back over again, I'm going to draw the wire across to the other side. 
and give that a teeny tiny squish and a squeeze. Now if you want to go round and round lots and lots of times you absolutely can but I like to go either one or two times around that central core wire before I bring the tail of wire down. Now I'm giving that a really lovely warm because every time we bend it around that core wire we're strengthening it slightly. It gets a little bit harder before we'd like it to. So let's just get that nice and neat and tidy. And what we're going to do is grip at that coiled section and then draw the wire down over the front. And I've just put a little bit of a nice gentle angle to bend into it. I like to think of this as a little bit of a petal or a flower, something like that, maybe a little leaf. And I'm going to grab now one of those beads into my design. This is a beautiful etched jade bead and I've had this about 12 years waiting for the right time to use it. We've got a good inch or so left going over the tip of our leaf design. So I'm going to plop the bead into position and fit it inside that shape, like so. And then I'm going to flip the design over. So we're looking at the back of the design at the moment and I'm going to grip hold of that tail of wire. Let me turn it sideways. And it's going to be gripped just beyond the tip of that leaf shape, like so, before I bring that all the way over the back. So you can see that bends around a little bit like a paper clip down at the base there. What I need to do now is trim away that last little bit of wire and I'm going to look twice before I press that down and trim that section away so that I've got a tail of around about four or five millimetres. It's just a short tail of wire. I'll give you an idea of how that looks. And then I'm just going to pinch that down so that the very tail, the very end section, sits underneath, underneath rather, the front bit so it kind of hides away just beneath that design. Now ideally what I want to do is give that a bit of a pinch with my pliers just to make sure it's nice and tight. You can give that end section a squish as well if you need to. The idea is that the very very tip of that cut end sits against the rear side of this section of the wire and then up at the top all we're going to do is either add a bead or go directly into a wrapped loop. Now this is a super simple one shot design so I'm going to add a bead on this one. What I've done in my demonstration piece is I've added two pieces on the outside which just have a bead and no section on the neckline, no bead on the neckline section and on the piece I'm demonstrating there's no need for me to demonstrate that twice because it's a very simple technique you can go directly into a wrapped loop or you can add yourself a bead. I've got this lovely titanium coated druzy agate to use for today. What I want to do is just give myself a little bit of space between the angle I'm about to create. Now this is the front of my design because that's where the smooth section of wire is. The cut wire is on the back. So I've designated this as the front of my design. I'm going to pop my pliers across the top of that core wire. And I'm going to push the wire forwards and I'm going to grab hold of my round nose pliers and swoosh that all the way around. So I've got the first half of a circular form there and you can make this a really teeny tiny little loop because it only has to go onto that one millimetre gauge wire frame for the earring to be completed. If you're using this in other designs you can play around with how large you make this circular form. So once I have that circular form I'm going to take the tail of the wire all the way around. I'm just going to control that so it sits as neatly and tidily as I can possibly get it. Give that a bit of a squish and again this is the rear side of the design with that cut section of wire. So this is where I'm going to cut the tail away so that that sits on the back of the design as well. And I'm just going to very, very neatly squish this last section of wire down so that it sits smoothly against the core and it doesn't flare out and look unattractive or lumpy. So if we take that to the front, we've actually got quite a nice, neat design. Now, if you didn't have the extra bead up at the top, you would have ended up with something a little bit like this. So I've made a couple of spare beads to go on either side and again these were just grabbed from my bead soup stash. 
Now these individual pieces can be used as tiny little earrings by themselves, they can be used as charms, lovely little pendants, you can play around with the size of the bead that you use as long as it goes on your core wire, you are absolutely golden with how large you make the leaf shapes and whatever beads you want to use. What I am going to do is show you how to make the circular earring form that I've created as a display piece and then you can have yourself a complete set of jewellery made from your bead soup or a bead scoop, whichever way you want to think of it. Let's head back down to the board and create the last piece of today's tutorial. For the second section and the final section of today's tutorial we're going to make this form that bears the charms we've created and you can add another little bead up at the top if you want to. If you've got pairs of beads in your stash you can absolutely make pairs of things but I kind of like the idea of it being a little bit like a harlequin there's all sorts of different colours everywhere you can use whatever beads you have available though so I'm working now with a nice 10 inches or so of that one millimetre or 18 gauge wire and what we're going to do is start with the round form so I have the fat end of my ring mandrel and I'm just going to draw that all the way around to get that round form to begin with and I have a good three inch tail on one end just here. Now if you are making these as earrings, it will pay you to use the same form to make this circle. I think I used the top of a perfume bottle when I made this one so they don't match. But you can obviously of course be at pains to make sure that that does match beautifully. Now this is far more wire than I actually need but that's fine, it's what I had available at the time. I'm going to use the longer of my two sides and just create an upright bend here, like so, and just pull that away at the 12 o'clock position, or what will finally become the 12 o'clock position, and then I've got that three inch tail of wire going in the other direction. So I'm going to now add on the beads that, of, that I've chosen to work with today, or the designs that I've chosen to work with today, and we're just going to slide that around until I've got a short one sitting here, now, as you might notice, this is the rear side of the design that we're looking at right now. And I may need to just twist these around if they're not sitting correctly. Let's choose the double bubble one next. So spin that along through the end. And then the last one comes into play. You can add beads on if you have them with large enough drill holes. If you're using a 1mm 18 gauge wire and you want your bead to travel around a circular form, the bead hole will need to be just a little bit larger than a standard 1mm drill hole because where the wire bends it's actually too broad to go through a standard 1mm drill hole so do just bear that in mind I think I've got one of these the wrong way around so you can slide that off push it back down yep yeah, that's much better they're all now facing in the same direction so I flip that over we can take a look at the form Overall, I'm quite happy with how that's looking. And we're going to reserve the size of our round form again once we've decided that that's the size we want it to be. I'm going to grip the wire that crosses over the front with that shorter tail at the point where that angle occurs. And I'm going to push the wire all the way around the back. It's exactly the same as when we started wrapping at the top of that leafy charm. So I'm just going to give that a gentle squish to hold it into position. And then I'm going to pull that over by hand. Now, when you're making these as earrings, even if your beads are odd, you may wish to concentrate on keeping the same number of wraps beneath the bead if you're going to add one and above the bead if you're going to add one. Also, it, whether or not you add a little coil here and up at the top here, try to keep them the same on both sides. It just adds an element of professionalism to your jewellery. So I'm going to give that a very, very delicate little squish just to make sure that I'm happy with how that's looking. And then just going to support the side of the wire over here so that as I start coiling around that core wire, I'm not pulling any of this wire into the coil that we're creating. So I think I've got four little wraps on the far side. So I'm going to push that wire over the top. And if this is the front of my design, because we've got the front side of the wires there. I'm going to trim the wire so that the end sits at the back. Now I'm going to grip hold very, very firmly just here, whilst I get that last little bit of wire sighted at the rear of the design and squished down firmly flat. It just remains now to add the last bead of the design. 
So you can close your eyes and grab a bead from your bead pot if you like. And I think I've got a bloodstone here. Quite like how that's looking. That's looking really good. If your the sides of your round form are a little bit uneven, you can very, very delicately pinch that and you can just even it up slightly. Let's just put a loop in. So I put the loop on this side of the earrings in the same orientation to the loop here because the earring findings I'm using are very, very simple, just bent head pins and it will sit better if the loop goes sideways, the same as the circle goes sideways. But you can do that in the opposite direction if you're using a different type of earring finding. So I'm going to estimate that I need to have three wraps up at the top draw the tail of wire over at a right angle. I think I'll probably get three wraps of wire in that space at the top. And then we're going to, again, just go for a very, very simple wrapped loop, creating that half round and then drawing the tail all the way around to complete that form. You can obviously take a little bit more time to keep that neat and tidy. Give that a squish and a squeeze. And then I've got loads more wire than I actually needed. So just to make my life easier, I'm going to trim that down to an inch. Otherwise, it's going to hit the table as I start wrapping around. When I grip this loop shape, I'm going to do that quite firmly. I'm going to pull the tail all the way around until I fill that gap with the three turns of wire that I need to match the first side. Now, when you get to the short, stubby end like so, you may wish to grab hold of a second pair of flat facing pliers. I'm going to hold that firmly into position and then push that around might need to trim just the tiniest bit extra off at the back so that the flat end doesn't become visible from the front side of the design. I will also show you how to straighten up that loop that I've just squished sideways. So we're looking at the back of the design and we're just going to get that flat end section down nice and neatly and then it's just going to sit this up at a proper angle. The earring findings that I'm using are super easy, super simple, so I'm just going to open that out gently and then close it back out. Of course, you can use your favourite design. I think I've put that on backwards. Yes, I have. Let's just open that back out. That's much more sensible. It will look much nicer in the ear. So you've got a pair, but not a pair, of earrings made with bead soup beads in quite a cute little design and they're very very beginner friendly pieces to work with. I really like working with bead soup or bead scoops. It gives you an opportunity to explore gemstone colours and combinations that perhaps you wouldn't normally use. You can also use up odds and ends and leftover bits from other projects. I hope you've enjoyed today's beginner friendly wirework tutorial here on YouTube. Have yourself a gorgeous day. Bye for now.